Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Most people who follow footy should know who Tony Liberatore is or at least who Tom Liberatore is, his son. But in this video we look at Tony Liberatore assaulting some voting staff at the election poll. Now, for those who just want to know about the story, I'll talk about that first and then feel free to leave if you want to and I'll go into some positives and negatives about his career and life like I always do on this channel with different people. So this supposedly happened last year, but now it's sort of coming into the news a bit. Liberatore has been reportedly charged with assaulting an election worker following an alleged incident at a pre-poll booth before the 2022 Victorian election. So Liber, who's now 57, the father of current dog star Tom Liberatore, who's played about 200 games now, has been accused of unlawfully assaulting a Victorian Electoral Commission staff member at a voting centre in Essendon last year. God, why would you even bother voting anyway? It's just such a waste of time. The incident allegedly occurred after Liberatore was denied access to the polling booth given it was closing for the day. A female staff member was allegedly pushed against the wall during the dispute, as if. As if he would just push someone, some woman into a wall. Hey, why are you not letting me vote? I just want to come in and vote for Dan Andrews. Now I'm sorry, we're closed for the day. Oh, okay, fuck are you. So the Liber lawyer has said that he will be contesting the charge and is set to appear in Broadmeadows Magistrates Court in June, which is a couple of months away. I don't think this would happen. Okay, he's not going to push some lady into a wall because he can't get into a voting booth. I mean, this would be the biggest story ever if this were true. Like, this would be, like, violence against women and all kinds of things. It'd be nice to hear her side of the story. And if there's any actual cameras at the place as well, that would be good to know. Or if anybody just phoned it. Phoned it? If anyone just filmed it on their phone, that would be good to see as well. So let's have a look at Libra himself, his career, the man, the life, the footy career. And there's certain actions on the footy field that I'm not proud of, but I think football changes a lot over years, 10-year periods generally, and um, it was a then-done thing, but it, obviously nowadays you can't do what I what I did back in uh, in the 90s, uh, late 90s. I actually liked Liberatore as a player. I thought he was tough and hard and went after people and was a good tag at, but also could read the play himself, which is why he won a Brownlee medal, why he was one of the best players out there. But he was also a bit of a coward as well, because as you see in the next clip, him and Romero and Demetina crash into James Hurd at the start of the game. Pretty wimpy for three of you to do it all at once. I remember this very well. And, you know, if he's such a tough guy on the field, why not just go out at him yourself? I mean, he's double your size, so you probably don't want to do that, but... They needed three of these guys to actually bump him. Having said that, one of the most memorable moments of 1998, I'm sure. God, this, this is embarrassing to be European. Look at these wankers running into James Hurd. That's a, a sign of defeat right there. I mean, the Bulldogs went on to win the game, but if you need three guys to go up to James Hurd and push him, then you're pretty much conceding that he's better than you. Can you can your mindset and your, and your determination get you that far? Certainly can. Um, if you want something bad enough, you can achieve it. And one of my old coaches and mentor, Dennis Pagan, always said that. Um. You have to praise Tony Liberatore for this. He was small, he was slow, he was not as talented as a lot of the players out there, and yet he managed to play 280 games, win a Brownlow medal, and become one of the icons of the sport, even making the Western Bulldogs Footscray team of the century. Pretty amazing stuff, no matter what your thoughts are on him. Not only in, um, in football, but in work, in, in your vocation. The harder you work, the easier it gets. And, and I, I pretty much, or even my second knee when I came back within 12 or 13 weeks, um, I just I was riding a bike the day after I got out of the hospital. Really? You know, because I wanted to get back. And I probably didn't care about my body as much. I sort of thought to myself, look, if it, especially the second time, like I, I was 32 or something like that, and I, and I said, look, if it goes, it goes. So, be it, you know, so the gap between injury and return at senior level was how many weeks? The second time, yep. 12 weeks, 12, 12 13 weeks. weeks, yeah. So No one else has been able to match your recovery time. That is quite amazing. So basically what he said there was after the knee injury that he sustained in 1998 in round five, got a full knee reconstruction. It took him 12 weeks to come back uh, due to his perseverance, literally riding a bike the day after and getting into the rehab as soon as possible. No one has matched that even to this day as far as I know. So 12 weeks from a knee recon has come back and played decent footy and the next year continued to play decent footy as well. So this guy is the definition of perseverance. Here is the most celebrated point in history from Tony Liberatore. 23 points up against the Crows in the 97 preliminary final. Kicks this point thinking it's a goal. Probably would have won the game for them. 
uh, but in fact is called a point. You're 23 points up and Amazing looking game. safe against Adelaide. You kick the point that, and we'll see it here. There, he, there's you being <laughs> shared. most celebrated yeah. point in history. Well, well, it probably was actually. Now, were you trying? And unbelievable. And then the Crows went on to beat the Bulldogs in the preliminary final by two points, and then win the premiership the next week. But had that gone through, and if you look at the goal umpire, if we can just get there's a look at him, <laughs> his the way his eyes are looking, it's probably a goal by the way his eye line is. And I would say this is probably a goal. And the Western Bulldogs should have beaten the Crows and played St Kilda in the grand final the next week. Liberatore Romero Di Martina. <laughs> you were known as the Wog Squad and you were proud of it, weren't oh. you? But you were at the <laughs> yeah, time. No. Yeah, Yeah, no, we were. Don't say that. Jose doesn't like that word. But anyway. Doesn't he? No, no Sorry, he Jose. <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? This is what I was trying to tell you in a few videos that I've done previously. It's okay for Indigenous players to say, oh, we don't like to be called certain words. It hurts us to the point where they need to take leave, take time away from the game because of that hurt by it. And look how Liber just laughs this off when people call us Wogs. This is what I mean. Oh, you're known as the Wog Squad. I mean, imagine if you said that to an Indigenous player. Oh, you're known as the something else, right? It'd be, they'd be up in arms. It'd be the biggest story from Boston to Budapest, right? But it's okay to say Wog, okay? Because we don't cry to mummy about it. We laugh about it. Ha, 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 ha. People are fuckheads. We don't care what people call us. We move on from it. Well, let, let's be clear here. Thank you. I agree with you. No one, even those of us who have thought tanking existed, have ever said the players weren't trying. Mm. What we say tanking is, is a football club constructing a team that won't play at its best. Like either. A lot of people think about this the wrong way, and here's my thoughts on tanking, okay? If you are not fielding your best side possible, you are technically tanking, okay? Now, when it comes to the bottom teams, a lot of people have issues with this because they'll say, oh, Carlton is at the bottom of the ladder or whatever, and they're trying to get draft picks for the next season, so they're putting their worst teams out there or not trying or anything like that, right? So that means they get the number one and the number two draft pick if they get less than three wins or some shit, right? But when good teams do it, like Richmond did back in 2015, I think it was, when they were playing for a final, they had already get, they had already got fifth spot. They were playing North Melbourne. And in round 22, they played the worst team possible. And so is that tanking? I mean, they've already got a final spot. They're trying to lose pretty much, or they're trying not to injure good players. So to me, that's tanking, but it is seen differently if it's done from teams at the bottom of the ladder compared to teams closer to the top. And there's some cool moments here in Tony Liberatore's last game with Tom Liberatore right next to him. Playing North Melbourne, unfortunately. And in true Liber style, at the start of the game, he gets bowled over by Sav Rocker. Unbelievable, this, uh, this theatre, you couldn't write it. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, big hit. Uh, and if Tony Liberatore is not up on his feet, which he's not right at the moment, there's a big hit. Safely say that he is hurting big time. Well, give and the dogs ended up smashing us, unfortunately. Uh, that is a magnificent... And here is the, the Warrior coming on for the last time in the last quarter. Missed the entire game except for the first minute at the last quarter. Last 10 minutes. And here is the second most celebrated point of all time. Oh, listen to the crowd. Pretty awesome stuff. And in the end, a long and distinguished career. Lots of positives, lots of negatives. A very interesting character of the game. And now back in the news again lately, so we'll see how this goes in June with this court case. Let me know what your thoughts are below. Uh, was I too harsh on my criticism? Or was I just in my criticism? Let me know what you think of Tony Liberatore and the video itself down below.